Howdy folks and welcome back to another video. This week I have a little canvas um, and I have some acrylic paints. It's been a while but I was really inspired by uh, Chloe Rose and Jamie Jo who have used this brand of acrylic paints and just made beautiful things with them. So I went out and I bought some, pretty much. It is the PBO or PEBIO brand of acrylic paints and I believe they're actually craft acrylic paints so for painting models and wood and stuff like that but like I say I've seen these guys make pretty things with them and I thought I want to do that too. So I got this little canvas it's one from the works I love the works uh, it's just a tiny little one a little bit bigger than A6 a little bit smaller than A5 I've primed it in gesso um, left it to dry overnight so hopefully it's ready to go. So the paints that I got were lemon yellow a dark green, probably has a fancier name than that, but I don't know. A uh, light green, a red, my favourite, a uh, dark blue, I guess, could be ultramarine, a light blue, saw that one coming, didn't you? A pinkish, purplish, reddish, oh, a white, and a black, which wants to roll over a lot. There you go. Yeah, so these are the colours I've got, and this is what I'll be using as a palette, just a basic plate from Ikea, uh, and my little itty bitty canvas. Um, let's, see, let's make art. So to start things off, I grabbed a green erasable pencil and sketched up my design. Apologies, it's not terribly clear. Um, it will become clear, and if you know me, you can probably guess what it is. <laughs> But I start off painting the background. I usually do this whenever I do an illustration of a character in a situation just because I have the terrible fear that I'm going to mess up the background. I'm fairly confident when it comes to characters because I draw them all the time but backgrounds, I don't know, there's something about them that still kind of spooks me so I, I usually make a point to, to do those first. Now it's been a fair few years since I used acrylic paints and I'd forgotten that they dry a lot darker than they go on so that's why I started with a darker colour in the uh, top left corner there and I remembered and uh, added a bunch of white to try and make it a bit more on the sky side. Something I have noticed about my videos is I tend not to give you guys any palette shots so here's a rare bit of palette action for you now. I'm trying to decide whether I like it better when you can see the palette so you can see me mixing my colours, dipping my paintbrush, that sort of thing, or whether it's better to just zoom in on the artwork itself. So let me know in the comments if you would like more palette action or if you're happy to just look at the artwork and try and figure out what happened on the palette yourself. I think this is about it, yeah, that's your lot, that's all the palette action you're going to get this video, so if you want more let me know. So if you haven't guessed by now, I am painting a frog. That's probably not a surprise to any of you that know me, frogs are my favourite animal. I actually used to keep frogs, I had uh, three red-eyed tree frogs, which is the type that I'm painting here, and they were adorable. Although they were nocturnal and everyone who came round was like, you just keep leaves because they were hard to spot, I knew where they were and they were amazing. But anyway, about the painting. <laughs> My method really um, at this stage is putting down a darker colour first and lightening it up. Uh, you can see with the green I hue shifted as well by adding a bit of yellow rather than just straight white. It just makes it a little bit more interesting. Like I said, it's been a fair few years since I last used acrylic paints, so I really didn't have any tips and techniques when I was in my teenage years that I remember now. <laughs> this is where I wished I had a brighter yellow. So the yellow that I've got is kind of on the pastel side of things um, and those feet really should have been a, a brighter orange but that was as bright as I could get it with the, uh, the yellow that I've got. So lessons have been learned. I might have to go back for more paints. I really liked the way these paints went down. I've never used such a watery type of acrylic before. I've also never used matte acrylics before. Um, 
and like I say, despite the fact it has been many years, um, the ones that I used to buy were like the Dale Rowney System 3 ones, I think they were. Um, and they were quite glossy when they went down. I don't know if I'm even using them right because I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to use like water and stuff like that, but I still cleaned my brush with water and if I thought the paint was too thick, I put a bit of water in it, so come at me paint police. But I really enjoyed the way that these went down. It was fairly decent coverage with just one coat. Um, so I was distracted momentarily by how the eyes darkened because the, uh, the, the time shifted there. <laughs> That's what I mean about the paint going down dark. Lighting. But yeah, these paints were great. Um, for a cheaper paint, they're £2 a tube. Uh, I guess a tube is what I'll call them for that. And they go on really nicely. Um, like I say, the coverage is pretty decent. For the most part, I didn't feel the need to put second coats on things. Um, I would recommend them if you wanted to try branching out in your acrylic paints. I'm intrigued to paint on wood with them, um, just to see, because I feel like that's kind of what they're made for. Um, so I'll, I'll let you know, maybe it'll be a future video. I have got some little bits of wood that I could paint, um, as well as a, a bit of a project that I'm hoping to get done before December. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. I obviously mixed up um, and decided to paint the character before I finished the background. I've just realised I went on and saying, oh yeah, I feel more confident when I'm doing a character, but remembered that I just went straight into the frog because I fancied it. Um, and now I'm going back to the background. And I wanted to keep it really quite simple. Um, again, I've gone for a children's illustration vibe. Um, I suppose it's kind of because that's what I do. <laughs> um, I do quite a lot of children's illustrations, so it's kind of my my go-to style also if you're trying out a new media it's a, it's a more simple style which I considered this me trying a new media considering how long it's been so that's why I really wasn't sure about these flowers when I first put them down because I thought oh actually they're really pulling my eye um, but I think after I lighten them up a bit I don't think it's as bad but I don't know, I still think it's quite contrasty and maybe it, it pulls your eye a bit. I think when I when I eventually put the pupils in the frog, I realise it's quite creepy looking at the moment. Um, it, it will get better. Um, I think that helps to, to pull your focus in because you're naturally drawn to, to eyes. But yeah, like I said, because things dry a lot darker, those eyes were, were looking quite bright, but they do tone down a bit. Is where the red-eyed tree frog gets its name, after all. It's red eyes. I think over here I'm just giving um, the vines their kind of extra vine hanging off bits moss. I don't know, I don't really, I don't really know jungle anatomy, but I'm just trying to look, make it look a bit jungly. But he's quite high up, I guess, because the sky's still there. I was just having fun, let's be honest. This is not factually accurate depiction of Costa Rica. <laughs> this is just me painting some leaves and some vines to think, yeah, it's jungle. Look. And those flowers obviously are jungle flowers of some kind. I think it's at this point that I realised, oh yeah, I put some flowers up here. <laughs> Let's paint those. And throughout working on this image, I kind of toyed with the idea of leaving it lineless. Um, I abandoned that idea about here, I think. Because, oh no, the, the eyes, they go. It's hopefully a lot less creepy now. <laughs> you, you can finally see, look, he's got something to smile about. He's been smiling that whole time, though. He's a nice guy. But yes, it's also where I abandon the lines. Or rather, the limelessness. I think the uh, the last painting that I did didn't have any lines, so I was like, oh, you know what, I missed my line art. So to do the line work, I didn't actually go straight straight up black. I mixed it with green for going around the kind of foliage and stuff and the edges of the frog. And then I mixed it with the um, pinky purpley red 
to go around the flowers and his eyes and I think I did his mouth with that colour too. I did leave the vines and the sort of distant bushes without an outline because I didn't want to draw too much attention to those. So I left those as kind of background, background stuff. Double background, so you know it's a good background. And yes, finally putting a big old shine in his eyes, now it's all dried. I just think that makes such a huge difference, like he looks so much happier and brighter. I did cheat and grab a Sharpie to sign it because I just didn't trust myself to sign it in a brush. So, there you go. And here he is. I think he's pretty cute, not gonna lie. I kind of wish he was a little 3D model and I could hold him. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to see him have some sort of adventure. But anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and my dabble with acrylic paints again. Look at those eyes. <laughs> if you have, then please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to stick around for more arty adventures, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. And that's all for now. Until next time, I recommend these paints. Grab them all you can, I don't know. Grab, go down to Hobbycraft and I, I don't know if anyone else supplies them, but yeah, two pound a tube. Really good paint, I like it. And it's all over me, so you know it's a good paint. <laughs> and until next time, folks, I'll see you later. Bye.